In this video, I'll show you how I paint Astral Templars. Hello and welcome everyone to another Brushstroke Painting Guide, where this time I'm going to take you through the steps I took for painting this Stormcast Eternal in the Stormhost colours of Astral Templars. So those of you who are familiar with this channel will know that this is actually the first Age of Sigmar video I've done. And truth be told, I've never really been a massive fan of the uh, look and feel of the Stormcast Eternals. But with the new Dominion box set, I have to say that these new models and the proportions of the models are much more to my liking. So I thought I'd dive right in and paint some Stormcast Eternals. So I fancy doing something a little bit different to the normal Stormcast all gold with blue accents and I came across this colour scheme which apparently is in the Codex and it's the Astral Templars. I really like the dark purple armour against the gold so I thought I'd give that a try. Uh, please do bear in mind though that I am a painter not a gamer so I do apologise if anything in this colour scheme isn't strictly canon with the Codex um, but I went for what I felt looked good and was in keeping with that colour scheme. Speaking of colours, all of the paints I use as usual will be listed in the description below, along with links of where you can buy those at discount prices and including a paint bundle where you can get all the paints you need for this colour scheme in one click, so please do check that out too. Very quickly though, before we make a start on the painting guide itself, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's supported this channel and subscribed so far. It's really starting to grow now and uh, I really do appreciate that support. If this is the first time watching and you haven't subscribed yet, then please, please, please do hit that subscribe button now. And don't forget that notification bell to make sure that you get notified whenever I post another video. Also, if you do like this video, then please do click that like button and let me know in the comments what you like about it and what you'd like to see more of. Um, but in the meantime, let's make a start on some painting. And the first thing is I've already prepared and primed this model. If you'd like more details, then please click this link. And the first step for this painting is going to be a base coat all over with some Screamer Pink from Games Workshop. Now for this step, it's just a case of getting a nice base coat in on all of those armor panels. Make sure that you get it into all of those creases and recesses. To do this, I've added a little bit of water so it flows nice and cleanly from the brush and I'll apply several coats to get a nice solid color. So as you can see, I'm not being particularly neat here. I'm gonna paint in all these details later so that doesn't really matter. But what I am trying to do is make sure that I get my paint on nice and smoothly. In fact, if you're lucky enough to have an airbrush, then I'd definitely recommend using it for this stage so you can get that coverage and get it on nice and quickly. So if like me, you're painting your model as separate parts, don't forget to apply this stage to all the parts that have armor panels and making sure that you get the base coat on those too. With the armor now base coated, I'm gonna paint the gaps between the armor panels. This is under the arms, behind the knees, that sort of thing. And for this, I'm gonna use Eschen Gray from Games Workshop. Just as I did on the uh, last step, I've added a touch of water to the paint just to help it flow nice and smoothly. This time though, I'm taking a bit more care because I don't want to get the paint onto the armor panels. Don't worry though, because some of these areas are quite awkward to get to, so don't worry if you do get paint on those armor panels. Just go back when it's dry and touch it up with some Screamer Pink to keep it nice and neat. You should find the coverage of Eschen Grey is actually quite good and you can probably get a nice solid colour with a single coat. But if you do find that you still have some of that Screamer Pink showing underneath, then do apply a second coat and make sure you get a nice solid colour. Moving on now, I'm going to base coat in all of those silver parts of the model. And for this, I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel from Games Workshop. Just as with the Eschen Grey base coating, you want to take your time and be careful not to get this onto any of the armor panels you've already painted. But if you do make any mistakes, just let it dry and you can neaten that back up again with some Screamer Pink. Just as with the previous base coats, I'm going to use multiple layers to build up to a solid color. Not forgetting to paint in the spearhead and the back of the shield. Moving on now to the leather details, and this is all the belts and buckles and the sword scabbard. And for this, I'm going to use a bad and black from Games Workshop. 
This step really is just working your way around the model and painting in all these straps and belts. There are actually quite a few, so do take your time. Some of them can be quite small, so if you do make any mistakes, then just let it dry and neaten it all back up again with the colour underneath. For the next step, I'm going to paint in all the gold details on the armour, and for this I'm going to use old gold from Vallejo. So on this model I thought I'd go for a pale gold to contrast nicely against the dark purple and this Vallejo gold is really nice although it is quite thin so you will need to apply multiple layers in order to build up to a solid finish. Remembering to paint in all the gold details on all the pieces if you're painting as separate parts. Moving on now to base coating all those white details, these are on the shoulder symbols and on the shield and for this I'm going to start off with a base coat of Celestra Grey from Games Workshop. I find Celestra Grey is actually uh, surprisingly good for coverage but I would still recommend that you thin it down and apply it as multiple coats to build up to that solid colour. Moving on now to the next step which is going to be painting in the bluey green accent colour. So I've used this on plumes and cloaks and things and for this I'm going to start off with a base coat of Sotec Green from Games Workshop. Once again I've just added that little bit of water just to help it flow cleanly and smoothly onto the model. I um, don't know why I don't use this paint more, it's really rich and vibrant and it really pops against the purple. Um, note to self, use more Sotec. Okay, next up it's time to base coat the weapons handles and for this I'm going to start off with some Deathclaw Brown from Games Workshop. On my original tester mini I actually painted these handles in as a darker leather but found that it just um, blended in far too much with the dark purple of the armour. So now I've changed it up to be a much warmer and more orange leather and I think it really pops. Not forgetting to paint in any grips on any side arms your mini might have as well. And for my last base coat colour I'm going to paint in any parchments and banners and for this I'm going to use Yushabdi Bone from Games Workshop. So I realise I'm starting to sound a bit like a broken record here and saying that I've added that touch of water but especially at base coat level it's really important that you get your paints on nice and clean and smooth so do make sure you thin your paints and apply multiple layers to build up to that solid colour. With those base coats done it's now time to move on to adding some washes to the model and the first one is going to be to all of the pink, uh, eschen grey and silver details and for this it's going to be Null Oil from Games Workshop. For this application you can actually be very liberal with it, you want to give it a nice strong wash, not so much so that it actually um, overflows on the model and runs out of control but you want to get some really deep shadows into those recesses. Do take care not to get it onto any of the colours that you don't want to wash, such as the golds and the whites. If you do make any mistakes, then just let it dry fully and then go back in and touch up with any of those colours. When applying washes like this, it's really important that you let them dry fully before moving on to the next stage, especially when you're adding such a heavy wash like this. So please make sure that you let it dry fully before applying the next stage. 
and that next stage is actually going to be applying another coat of null oil. This time though I'm not going to apply it as a heavy wash like before, I'm going to apply it more of a glaze over the armour panels and it's just over the armour panels and I'm going to use it to darken down and correct any blemishes and watermarks that I might have had from the first wash. So this time I'm not letting it settle and pull into any of those recesses, I'm just coating a layer across the whole of the surface just really to give it a darker tint. And when you're done, let it dry before moving on to the next stage. Okay then, with that armour now looking really nice and dark purple, I'm going to move on to adding a shade to all the gold areas and for this I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. Nice and simple then this step, just add your wash and let it settle into all those recesses. Um, don't overload it, you just want a nice even coverage and let that dry before moving on to the next step. Now for the blue details I'm actually going to do things a bit back to front. I'm actually going to add the highlight first before doing the wash and for this I'm going to use Adriatic Blue from Scale 75. So I thin my paint down and I'm just picking out the highlights on the top of each of these strands. Now there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing it this way around. The first one is so that it's easier to correct any mistakes I might make with the Sotec Green. And then the second one is when I apply the wash I can use it to soften down these transitions and give some real depth and smoothness to my blending. And now for the blue-green wash, I'm going to use uh, some thinned-down contrast paint. It's actually a Killian green uh, with some contrast medium from Games Workshop. So if you've not used contrast paints before, they're very much like a wash, but uh, a lot more concentrated. So what I've done is I've thinned it down to three parts contrast medium to one part green. And now I'm just going to apply it as I would do normally any other wash. So while I'm waiting for that contrast paint to dry, I'm going to uh, apply a shade now to all of the weapons handles. And for this, I'm going to use Soft Tone from Games Workshop. Okay, so I'm just working that shade into each of these recesses. Um, these handles have a really nice texture to them, and they're quite deep too. So that means that you can get a nice deep shadow, but it doesn't settle that much on the top. So you actually get the highlight in one step as well. Moving on to the next step, and this time it's going to be adding some edge highlights to all of that purple armour. And for this I'm going to use Pink Horror from Games Workshop. So this is by far and away the most time consuming step of the painting process, but it's definitely worth taking your time and getting it nice and clean because really nice sharp clean edge highlights do make this uh, colour scheme really pop. So all I'm doing is I've got a little bit of thinned paint and a nice sharp tip to my brush and I'm just working my way around each of the armour panels and picking out all of these edges. If you'd like some more advice and tips and tricks in terms of how to improve your edge highlighting then uh, please do check out the video I made by clicking the link above. It just lists a few uh, things that I've found that have really helped me improve my edge highlighting and I hope you'd find it useful too. So by keeping my paint nice and thin, it means that I can actually apply multiple layers and build up um, concentration towards maybe the corners to add that extra highlight or color. Also, it means on the topmost surfaces, which will be catching more of the light, I can make those a stronger highlight as well. Just, uh, just taking my time and uh, slowly working my way around the model and picking out all of these edges. Okay then, so that's all of the armour highlighted and as I was doing it I felt the plume was actually looking a bit too blue. So I'm just going to add a bit more of a green tint to it by applying a glaze over the top with some thinned down Bale Tan Green and Lamia Medium. 
So this is just a 50-50 mix of Baotan and Lamium, and I'm just, uh, just heavy glazing it over the top really, just to add an extra green tint to the plume. Moving on then to the next step, which is going to be brightening up all of the silver details and adding my favourite part to this scheme, which is the little silver rivets. And for this, I'm going to use Pewter from Dark Star Miniatures. For this scale armour, I've decided I want to have a really bright and clean look. So I'm actually going to paint in each of the scales individually um, and just leave some of that shade in the recesses and the gaps between them. If you wanted a more um, used or dirty look, then I'd say just to edge highlight each of the scales. For all the other silver details on the model, I'm just going to apply an edge highlight in the same way that I did for the purple armour. And then finally my favourite detail in this scheme, just adding a little dot onto top of all of those rivets. Now I'm going to turn my attention to brightening up all of those gold details. And for this I'm going to use a, a bit of a mix of Pro Acryl's white gold and old gold from Vallejo. So I've made this a mix of two parts of the white gold and one part of the old gold, just so it's got that little bit of warmth still in it, but is a very nice crisp bright white gold. And now I'm just going to use that to highlight all the edges and surfaces of the gold. Pretty much covering all of the surface of the gold and just leaving that shaded area in the recesses and the crevices. I really love adding this layer to the gold, it really makes it stand out and pop. The shine on it is just so, so bright. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to all of the white details on the model and layer up using some Althorn Grey from Games Workshop. Up next, I'm going to finish off all of the banners and parchments on the model. Uh, so the next step is going to be applying a wash of Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. So on this model I'm going to paint the flag on this spear and the scroll on the shield in exactly the same way. As always when applying a wash, do make sure that you let the wash fully dry before moving on to the next step. With that sepia wash now nice and dry, I'm just going to layer back up again and brighten the scrolls up with some Yushabti bone. This is very similar to how we painted the gold, I'm just going to leave the shaded areas in the recesses and paint all the other surfaces with the Yushabti. Now I'm just going to finish off those scrolls with an extra little highlight of some Screaming School from Games Workshop.
Just one final little detail to add now before it's time to get it onto its base and this is going to be highlighting all of the black leather details and for this I'm going to use some Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. Just taking a bit of care now not to get any paint on any of the other details we've painted in and just picking out these edges so that they uh, stand out from the rest of the model. Okay, so that's it. So I've got it added onto its base now. Uh, just a couple of things that I've changed because I wasn't so keen on it. Uh, the end of the spear here, I just painted the uh, housing around it in gold rather than the silver because I think that looks a little bit better. And one thing I didn't do on camera was painting those gems. So I used a little bit of uh, Batharoth blue and then just highlighted them with a dot of white. And so that's it, the Astral Templar is complete. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, then please do hit that like button. It makes all the difference to the channel and helps me make more of these videos. If you'd like to see more Age of Sigmar content, then please drop a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. Don't forget to check out the description below for all of the paints that I've used in this video and links to where you can buy those at discount prices, along with the paint bundle where you can buy everything you need in one click. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. So thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again soon.